uh, came to Washington, D.C. on Monday, left today, and Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak departed New York for Israel following failed talks with U.S. Middle East envoy George Mitchell aimed at easing tensions between the two nations over the continued growth of Jewish towns in areas claimed by the Palestinian Arabs. Uh, Barak said that the talks focused on a wide range of issues, including Iran and the need for a comprehensive regional peace, and not just peace between Israel and the Palestinians, but Israeli media focused on the issue that certainly dominated the talks, the ongoing construction of homes in Jewish settlements and Jewish neighborhoods on the eastern side of Jerusalem. Barak tried to strike a positive note, saying that while the two sides had not come to any kind of agreement, they were closer than ever to an understanding on the issue. He insisted that no one in Washington truly believes life can just come to a standstill in Jewish settlements and natural growth be halted. But in recent demands... Uh, leaked to the media, that appears to be precisely what the Obama administration wants, including in large Jewish neighborhoods in Jerusalem. Barack did indicate that he had not only been on the receiving end of criticism during the talks, but had also impressed strongly upon the Americans that their focus on construction of a few Jewish houses is exaggerated and that equal, if not greater, importance needs to be placed on the Arabs finally meeting their peace commitments. He said, quote, the Arab states have something to give Israel, not just take, said Barack. Well, Shimon Perez uh, was asked to speak at an interfaith conference in Kazakhstan on Tuesday, yesterday. And guess what? When he got up to speak, the Iranians stormed out of the place. Yeah. Um, Iranian delegates stormed conspicuously out of the opening event of an interfaith conference in Kazakhstan on Tuesday, says Israel Today News Center, when Israeli, Shimon, uh, Israeli President Shimon Peres was invited to the podium to deliver an address. One Iranian later told uh, reporters that his country views Peres as a, quote, repulsive Zionist, end quote. Now, this is Iran talking, you know, Ahmadinejad's people and said he was not welcome at such a conference. The Iranians returned to the hall after Perez had finished speaking. For his part, Perez urged his mostly Muslim audience to cast aside religious fanaticism and, it, and its adherents and make peace with Israel on the basis of reason and compromise. He specifically called on Saudi King Abdullah to meet with him in Jerusalem or in Riyadh so that their shared vision of peace can finally be realized. And this news article says that Shimon Perez in his speech said, quote, we are aware of the big change which has occurred in the positions of a majority of Arab countries toward peace with Israel. A transition from three no's of Khartoum, no negotiation, no recognition, no peace, to the three yeses of the Saudi initiative, he said. The king of the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan, Abdullah II, defined the Saudi initiative as a readiness for peace between the state of Israel and 57 Arab and Muslim states. King Abdullah instigated the Arab peace initiative, which calls for a comprehensive peace agreement between Israel and the Arab world in exchange for Israel's withdrawal from the West Bank territories and a solution to the Palestinian refugee issue. Is, uh, Iranian delegates, of course, as I said, stormed out of the conference as Perez began to deliver his speech. The Iranians had threatened to cancel their participation altogether after learning that Perez would be a keynote speaker at the two-day Congress of World and Traditional Religions in its capital of Astana. Perez, they said, is not a religious leader. He's a man of violence. At the opening of his speech, Perez indirectly attacked Iran, Al-Qaeda, and Hezbollah, saying, quote, There are those who worship a God who sanctions massacres and, cruelly and call, cruelty and calls on his followers to deceive and destroy. We must separate religion from terror, end of quote. Prior to his speech, Iranian delegation member Meda Mostafazi, uh, Mostafazi, Mostafazi, that's kind of hard to say for a Texan. <laughs> Told a group of Israeli reporters that 
Religion can be a bridge to peace, but refused to continue speaking after realized he was talking to a group of Israelis. <laughs> Arab Chief Rabbi Yonah Metzger also addressed the conference. During his speech, the rabbi held up a picture of the captured IDF soldier Gilad Shalit and said, quote, no one knows where he is and how he fares. End of quote. How sad. Well, along with all of that, Iran is building some construction projects along Israel's northern border in Lebanon. And here's what uh, uh, WorldTribune.com says about it. The Israeli military is conducting an air and ground force buildup along the border with Lebanon, according to Lebanese security sources. Lebanese security sources said that the Israeli army had deployed main battle tanks and armored personnel carriers along the northern border with Lebanon. The sources said that Israeli troops and combat vehicles have undertaken what was termed unusual military activity. He said, this is not an exercise, a security source said. The sources identified the Israeli combat platforms, armored vehicles, uh, Merkaba tanks, etc. They were seen at several points along the 70-kilometer Israeli-Lebanese border, including the Shaba'a Plateau. Lebanese state-owned National News Agency also reported Israeli fire along the border on June 27th. The agency said Israeli Air Force sent attack helicopters into Lebanese airspace as well. Israel has not reported on such activity. The sources said Israel also brought in bulldozers, drills, and cranes into the divided town of Gehar on the eastern sector. They said the deployment appeared to be in response to an Iranian construction project near the Israeli border. The Israeli military deployment took place as the Jewish state proposed advanced talks with Lebanon meant to resolve border issues. Um, currently, Israel and Lebanon have discussed border activity along uh, under the auspices of the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon. The Le Lebanese army said Israel is also telephoning residents in South Lebanon and offering them money for information on the whereabouts of missing Israeli soldiers. The army demanded the Lebanese citizenry refuse to cooperate. The army said, the Lebanese army said, quote, any attempt to cooperate in such matters is clearly dealing with the enemy, end of quote. Well, those are the news out of the Middle East. Things are still heating up over there. They don't seem to be any closer to peace than they ever were. But I can tell you that one of these days soon, the prophecies of the Bible concerning the tribulation period will come to pass. I foresee a war in northern Israel with Syria and Damascus being destroyed, followed by an invasion, a, an invasion by Iranian forces along with Russian forces. This is called the Battle of Gog and Magog, Ezekiel 38. It's coming. It could be coming soon. I'm J.R. Church. We'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.